Hi, and welcome to Bremster Puzzles, where I'm now bringing you the next set of puzzles from the World Puzzle Federation, which is the 2015 set Round 4. Um, these were competition puzzles set back in 2015, um, and I've spoken to a few people, and I am going to do these in order, which means I will be doing all of the classics from the set first, and then I'll be doing all of the variants. Um, I had discussed possibly doing these where I would mix up the classics and the variants, and people thought it would be better if I presented them in the order that they were in the pack, and that would probably make people more people happy. Um, everyone I spoke to about it said that they would prefer it if I just followed the order in the pack. Now, I've also had some uh, discussions with people who actually competed in some of these. You can see the results um, of the actual competitions and who got how many points back in the day. Um, the person I originally spoke to where they were saying that you were aiming for about five points a minute, um, they uh, the information they gave me was based on their practice regime. Um, you actually got 90 minutes to do these and very few people, most, and some people were able to complete all of these puzzles in the 90 minutes and get all 600 points, which means they were aiming for, uh, sort of, they were aiming for, what would that mean? About seven and a half points a minute. And this was a 20 point puzzle. So you were aiming to do this puzzle in under three minutes. Um, so that's just astounding to me. I am not going to be trying to do that in those times. Um, so yeah, absolutely astounding the speeds that some people are able to do these puzzles, um, especially as um, I've actually run some of these puzzles past my testers, and some of these took my testers over 45 minutes to do, and they were puzzles that were worth under 100 points of the 600 in the competition. Um, so I'm expecting this to be very, very weird. Now, one of the other things that came up when I was talking to people who did solve some of these competitively is they weren't doing what we do now when I present a puzzle on the channel. They weren't trying to solve logically. What they were doing is putting the information in and then they were just trying to get the right answer rather than prove the right answer. So often they would get to a situation in a grid where they um, get it down to one or two possible options, or they get it down to two or three possible options, and then pick what would be the most constrained and solve from there and hope it was correct. And if it wasn't, they would make a decision about whether it was faster to then put the other option in or just move on to the next puzzle. So what they would do is what we call bifurcation, which is get to a bit as fast as possible where they could then pick what is it seems to be the most likely option rather other than prove the logic. So because it's all about getting the right numbers into the grid as fast as possible, how you do it isn't important. So they, they wouldn't be looking for advanced Sudoku logic. They would just be going for speed, even if that means this, this, this cell is the one that is going to have the most impact. I will pick a digit and solve from there. So very, very interesting concept and worth keeping in mind, apparently, as we get onto some of the later puzzles in this series, which apparently do use that technique incredibly heavily if you are trying to speed solve. I'm going to have a look at this one now. This is the first classic in the 2015 round four set. Um, so uh, let's give this one a look. I do have the, na the name of who set. All of this set was set, uh, set was created by one person. Um, and I do have that written down, but I don't have it here. So I'll uh, uh, provide those details with tomorrow's puzzle. So this is the first classic Sudoku. So um, so the rules on this one are quite simple. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So in every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits one to nine must be placed without repetition. So I'm going to restart the puzzle to restart my timer, though I'm not that worried about how fast I am. Let's give this a shot. So I can see four and four are looking up, which means four has to go in one of those. Four can't go here or here. So this is a four. I have been told that what a lot of speed solvers will do is they will start with ones and just do all of the ones and then all of the twos. Actually, that would have helped here because the ones can't go in any of those. So this is a one, which actually puts one here. Can I continue with ones? Ones can't go in any of those. So ones would go in one of those two. Yeah, one goes in this one by Sudoku because one looks down, not going in any of those. One can't go in any of those. Now the one is looking into those, making this the one. 
So one is in one of those two, and one is in one of those two. That seems to be as far. What I'm doing here is I'm marking ones in corners where one, um, in a classic Sudoku, I will normally try and do this, where one can only go into two cells in a box. So because I can, uh, there's only two places I can put a one, I will put a, um, in this in any or in a box. This is called a box of a Sudoku. I will place the one in in the corner of those two cells. So if I do end up eliminating one from one of them or placing a digit into one of these two cells, I can immediately place the one, and I'll do this with other digits as well, because I know that they're the only two places they can go. Should I move on to twos? No, I should move on to fours again, because this four can't go in any of those, so the four has to go in one of these two, but this four is looking up saying not here, so this is the four. Uh, four and four puts four in one of these, but that four says not there. So four is in one of those two. Four and four, however, is saying four is in here. So that's the four. This isn't the four. This is the four, which has just displaced one of the ones, meaning this is the one, which looks across saying that's not the one. Therefore, that's the one, which looks down saying that's not the one. That's the one. The one and the four is all interacted with each other. Now I can see I've got a quite a full column here, which is containing all of the digits one through six. So these digits here, and I don't mind doing this when I'm solving, have to be seven, eight, nine. This one can't be an eight. This one can't be an eight. So this one has to be the eight. This is also now, a can I do the seven, nine? Not that I'm seeing, but this is a triple now again. So I've got six digits already placed in this box. So the other one is down to a triple. And I quite like placing triples because I visualize them well. So these are two, three, and nine, which actually I don't think has helped me that much. Oh, well. So what digit am I looking at next? Actually, five and five is looking down, putting five in those two, but this five looks down saying that's not a five and that's a five. Now, I could immediately see that this was a five because I could see the three fives looking in. But when I'm explaining on a video, I think it's easier to follow. If I just gone, oh, that's a five, people may have needed to backtrack and figure out what I'd done. Whereas if I do it by saying these two are the two places for a five, but this one is looking down, it's easier to follow. And I'm much more interested in making these videos easier to follow. So in this column, I haven't placed two, eight, and nine. So these are two, eight, and nine in the column. This one can't be an eight. So eight is in one of those two. Okay, in this row, I haven't placed five, eight, and nine, and I can't put five in either of those two. Where is five in this row? I can't put it in these cells or these cells because they're full and there's already a five in this box. So this is the five and these are the eight and nine that have to go into that row. So the five and the five, that's not really doing anything. I could do I do see that three is in one of those two because three has to go in this box. So three in this box can't be in any of those or there. So three is in one of those two. This is a quadruple. And these are six, seven, eight, nine. So I can see eight is in one of those two. And I can do something with that because the eight means it's not in those. But in this box, where can I put the eight? Because the eight must go in one of those two because these are all full of digits that aren't eight. And this eight is seen that one. So eight is in one of those two. So in this column, if I put an eight here, there's no eight in box one. So this is not the eight, this is the eight. And now I've got another triple, six, seven, and nine. which is interesting, maybe, don't know. Okay, where am I looking now? Uh, eight in this row, actually. This eight is saying eight's not in any of those, so I need to put an eight in the row. It has to go there, which means eight is in one of these two. This eight is looking up saying not there, so this is the eight. This is actually a triple now. It's two, seven, and nine, which means these have to be the two, seven, and nine in this box. If I was to put a two, seven, or nine into any of those cells, I'd end up with uh, repeated digits. So while I can't see how to place those, I can see these can't be from two, seven, or nine. So these are three, five, and six, and there's no three in either of those. So that's the three. Looking across saying that's not the three, this is the three. This is a two... 
raise a glass to freedom. So this two is looking across saying that's not a two. So this is now the two in this box. This is the nine. The two is looking down saying there's no two here. This is an eight, nine pair. Now the five, six, not seeing how to resolve that yet. This, however, well, the nine is looking down, taking nine out of all of those, making this the nine, which means this is a trip. Well, actually, I can just place this. That's the two that hasn't been placed in the column. So these are three, six, and seven. There's no six there. There's no three there. Why did I put three, four, six, seven? What have I done? Is it three, six? Let's do that again. This is three, six, seven. There's no three there. There's no six there. That's better. Okay. This row is missing its five and six, and this can't be a five. So where's five in this row? This becomes the five. This becomes the six. This therefore becomes the six, and this is a triple now, which is five, seven, and nine, and there's no five there or there. So this is the five. This is a seven or a nine. So in this column, it is two, three, seven, and nine. So this is three, seven, or nine? Where's eight in this row? That's an important question because I can't put eight in any of those or any of those. That's the eight, that's the nine. So this is three, seven, or nine, and it can't be a seven. So it's a three or a nine. And there must be a nine in one of those two because I can't put a nine in any of those. So because there's a nine in one of those two, this can't be a nine or there's no nine in row five. That's the seven, that's the nine, that's the seven. Taking seven out of there, this is now a three nine pair looking over making that the seven, that the six, that the three. Cool. There now must be in this column, where is the two? It must be in one of those two cells. So if this was a two, there'd be no two in this column. This is not a two. That's a three, nine pair. So what I haven't placed in this column is two and six. So these, oh, I could do it by box. These are two and six. The six is looking across making that the two and that the six. Now these are down to pairs. I haven't placed a two or a nine. In, this, in those two cells, and in here, I haven't placed a seven or an eight. This eight looks down, making that the seven and that the eight, meaning there's no seven there. This column now has a two nine pair. So where's the three in this column? It must go there, taking three out of there. The eight is looking down, making that the nine and that the eight. The nine is making that the two and that the nine. The two and the nine are looking up, making that the seven, meaning there's no seven there, but the nine is looking up, making that the two and that the nine. This is a triple, which I will be able to resolve, but I find it's faster and easier to follow on video if I mark the triple in and then eliminate. So this is two, six, and seven, and there's a six and, no, let's use this column. There's a two and a seven, which makes this the six. I take the six out of here, and this becomes a two, seven pair. The six looks across, making that the seven, and that the six, the seven looks back making that the two and that the seven, the two looks across making that the nine, so I can remove nine from both of those, which means this is the three and this is the two, the three looks up making that the nine and that the three, and that is the solution to the puzzle. Now, if I was aiming for a world-class time that was triple the time I would be aiming for, but I was doing an explanation. And if I was aiming for even a good practice time, it's double. But I'm not. <laughs> I'm really not. Um, I would prefer to explain it and enjoy the puzzle. So 10 minutes, I'm cool with that. Um, but I am trying to explain the way these puzzles worked. So the 600 points, you were aiming for 90 minutes. Um, so that's 400 points an hour that you're trying to do. And that includes loading up the puzzle, solving the puzzle, and entering the solution into the system. That is a ridiculous amount of, of speed that people are trying to do. And there were not many people. I think there were only maybe six or seven people who were able to do that. So some of the fastest solvers in the world. I'm never even going to try and be one of them. Um, and as I said, a lot of the techniques they would use, um, having spoken to some of the people who did compete even back then and still compete now, um, it is not about trying to find the logic. It's just about trying to find the numbers. Um, yeah, so 
that's the way it works. Uh, I will try and remember tomorrow to bring the accurate details uh, about who the setter of this one was. Sorry, I should have loaded that in advance, but they will become available tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this one. And as always, good luck with your solving.